guys, Anthony DiClemente here with Biohacking Secrets, and in this video we're going to talk about something a little uncomfortable, specifically putting things in your bum. Now, this is an enema bucket, and coffee enemas are one of the best detoxification strategies, particularly in detoxifying the liver, so that you can experience increased energy, mental clarity, and release stubborn fat cells. We're going to give you everything you need to do coffee enemas, how I do it myself and with clients, and if you stick around till the end of this video, you're going to see this end go in my end. So you start with a pot like this. Now, I'm going to do just one thermos today for demonstration purposes, but typically I do two so that I have plenty of coffee made up and it lasts a lot longer. So you take some filtered clean water. This can be penta water. It can be reverse osmosis. It can be even, eh, there's a lot of other kinds, but you basically want to move, remove fluoride and many of the contaminants that exist in city water. And you pour it in. Now you want it to be all the way to the top in the thermos because some of it is going to boil off as uh, in the form of steam. Then you turn the heat up to high, put the lid on, and let it boil. Now while this boils, I'm going to talk a little bit about how coffee enemas work. It's specifically through a pathway called NRF2. And what NRF2 does is it helps to uh, transcribe enzymes and antioxidants in our body like glutathione and superoxide dismutase. And those are what neutralize free radicals. The same free radicals that can make us tired or cause our body to age faster than it should. So it's suggested that coffee enemas help open up that pathway. And when our detoxification pathways are shut down or compromised, we can feel tired, lethargic, and we can start putting on weight. Now, the amount of coffee that you're going to want to use is approximately one cup. If you're doing two thermoses, then it's gonna be two cups. The type of coffee is this Cafe Man, C-A-F-E-M-A-N. -E we'll put the link on the video for where you guys can get the coffee. The type that you want is five pound therapy roast with caffeine. Caffeine is very important because that is what initiates the hermetic response in the liver. So caffeine is a little bit of a toxin, just a little bit. So when it is received by the liver through the hepatic portal vein, the liver goes, whoa, what are these toxins? And it ramps up function. Some studies have shown up to 500% to push toxins out. So it not only pushes the caffeine out, but it pushes a lot more out. So those are some of the benefits, and that is one of the main pathways that uh, these mechanisms are working to benefit you. So take a measuring cup, get yourself about one cup. Let's see if I went a little heavy there. It's closer to two cups. And there you go. So now we've got our cup of coffee. We've got the water boiling. And yeah, we'll continue in just a sec. All right, so now that we've got the water boiling, the next step is to add the coffee. So as you can see, we've got a nice rolling boil going. We've got our pre-measured one cup of coffee if you're only doing one thermos. If you're doing two thermoses, it's going to be two cups. And here's a couple things you want to keep your eye on. High boil over risk at this stage. So have a spoon ready and if need be to turn down the heat. So you pour in the coffee, mix it in. And now that all the coffee is mixed in, you set the timer for three minutes. So three minutes with the lid off on a high boil is what we want. I usually keep my phone close. And you can see here it's coming up a little bit. Now, we're okay right now, but I have made the mistake of walking away and finding coffee all over the kitchen before. So don't fall victim to the same fate. Um, cool. So then let it go for three minutes, and then I'll share the next step. All right, so the coffee has just boiled for three minutes. Now what we want to do is we want to turn down the heat and bring it to more of like a simmer or a low boil. And then after it has finished, we do that. We take the lid and we put it on. We set the timer for 15 minutes this time. And then the preparation part of the coffee is coming to its final step. All right, so now your coffee has finished simmering for 15 minutes, cooking for a total of 18 minutes. And we are going to now get the grinds out and the coffee into your thermos. So here's how that is done. You remove the lid, shake off some of the water that will inevitably be on the lid, take a towel to protect your hands, grab the pot, and then as we come over to the sink here, you'll see I've got the thermos sitting in the sink with an extra fine strainer over it. That's going to catch the coffee grounds. Then you carefully and slowly pour the coffee in, just so until the thermos is full. Then if you're going to do your enema right away, 
you definitely want to be careful and choose the temperature of the water that you combine it with to protect yourself because this is hot. Or if you're going to be doing it later, then you can cap the thermos and you have it ready to go for when you are. All right, so now you've got your enema coffee in the 64 ounce thermos. You've got your enema bucket ready to go. You've got your measuring cup and you've got your clean fluoride free water. <laughs> Here's how we're going to make the enema. Typically, if you're starting out, you can start with anywhere as low as half a cup, but most people find that two cups is the sweet spot. But if you're a little bit more sensitive or it's difficult for you to hold, feel free to dial it down to about half a cup of coffee. In this case, I'm going to do the full two cups. Trying not to spill all over the kitchen. <laughs> now, got two cups of coffee. Goes right into the bucket. That is still hot. So, Always check the temperature before going all in, as they say. Then we're going to do about 2 to 3x the amount of coffee as water. So if we just did 2 cups of coffee, we're going to do about 6 cups of water. That also goes into the bucket. And there's an important step that you don't want to overlook here. I'm going to share that in just a second. Now this is a good way to warm up. So we've got enough for about four cups of water and two cups of coffee, but you can definitely do a three to one ratio, which would be six cups of water and two cups of coffee. Um, so you can see the bucket here. Now we've got a bunch of air still in the tube. You want to get rid of that before you begin. This is important. So the enema tube will have a clamp like this. The way to get rid of the air is you open up the clamp and then you just lift the bucket. Get all the air out, reclamp, and now you're ready for your enema. All right, guys, so this is the moment that we've all been waiting for, the enema. Now, one thing you want to do before the enema is make sure to apply a little bit of lube. It can either be organic coconut oil or it can be Wicked Ultra, which is my preference. You apply a tiny bit to your hands, and then you get a little bit on the end of the enema tube. Now, you find your, make your way to a relaxing position. Apply a touch of the lubricant to yourself. Gently insert the enema tube and then open up the clamp to release the flow of coffee. Once that's done, I actually look forward to this time a lot because you can do guided meditations like Holosync or Headspace. You can even listen to your favorite binaural beats. One thing you want to do, throw on headphones, put your phone in airplane mode and just relax. Now, it'll take anywhere from one to five minutes for the coffee to leave the bucket and enter you, depending on how high the bucket is, because that's what allows gravity to assist the coffee in entering your body. Once your body has taken all of the coffee in, set the clock for anywhere from 10 to 15 minutes, relax, do your favorite guided audio meditation, and when you're done, just make your way to the bathroom, do a gentle release. And that, my friends, is how you do a coffee enema. If you guys are dealing with any health issues, this has been done as many times as five to 10 instances per day. Or if you're feeling good and you're just doing it for a boost, anywhere from one to three times a week is still pretty frequent, or you could do it as needed. But again, this isn't medical advice, so discuss with your physician. And if you guys enjoy these tips and you want more uncommon strategies to increase your body's natural energy production, decrease your biological age, we've got an unlimited lifetime access offer to our membership site, the Biohacking Secrets Lifestyle, and you can get that now for a limited time at www.biohackingsecrets.com forward slash live only offer. I appreciate you guys hanging out and I hope you had as much fun as we did.